Hi, I'm Lisa with Ivy Lane Interiors. Welcome back. Today's project is this cute little mid-century modern dresser. It was stored in a barn, so before I brought it into my house, I had to make sure to get all those cobwebs off. It wasn't too bad on the inside, but the outside definitely had a lot. So you want to make sure you get all those real little gross things off before you actually bring it into your garage. So my daughter helped me get it out. I bought it because of this base. Um, I, I, when I saw the pictures, I, I love an interesting base, and I do love mid-century modern. Um, as you can see, it has some damage. Um, I've got some pretty severe cracking um, of the veneer on top and then I had some uh, missing chip veneer you can see the drawers though they are dovetail construction so all wood construction but I do have some problem areas as you can see I had some on the side some veneer missing um, but structurally it's a quality little piece so and I did like the hardware so I decided okay we're gonna see what we can do with this piece I always like to start with a really good clean, so I'm just going to use my shop vac and I'm going to give it a good dust and then I'm going to go in with some type of a degreaser. So I usually like to use either TSP or I use Awesome as my degreaser and I just clean the entire piece before I move on to any kind of repairs or stripping or sanding. So I'm going to go ahead and use some wood glue and I love these little syringes. I do have them linked down in the description. Um, it's nice because you can put that little red cap back on and uh, some of the syringes I use, um, they dry up in the syringe and these don't. And so I really, I really enjoy using them. They come in a really big pack and obviously I've only ever used one. So you, I use the tight bond glue and I'm going to make sure I get in there and I'm going to glue all that loose veneer up and then I will go in and fill it in as well. So I actually did like this hardware. I considered replacing it, but I, I just kind of liked it. So I decided, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take it off and I'll clean it up and see um, what it is. Whenever I'm picking the hardware off, I wanna make sure that um, I keep it in one central location. So I like to try to put the screws back in the hardware and then I just write on whatever Ziploc bag I'm using. I try to label it with the project that it is. And then I keep all my hardware in a specific spot in my garage cabinetry. That way I don't lose it because it's really hard to replace vintage hardware. I had one drawer guide that was just a little loose. It was missing the nail. So I just put, put a nail in and fixed it up. So the goal of this piece was to try to strip the drawers and the base and to keep those wood. So I'm just going to start with 80 grit. I wasn't sure. This is back. Sometimes these old pieces have hardly any finish left on them. So you can just go in with sandpaper. You don't even have to use a stripper. And it was coming off really fast. And so I just went in with um, 80 grit and... Um, worked it and then I'm just going to go through the grids you can see I'll have some um, there was like some little glue or something stuck in in one of the little crevices so I just use 80 grit get the finish off and then I'll go ahead and sand it again with 120 and then I'll go up to 180 and then I'm going to pause and decide I'm not sure if I'm going to use gel stain or if I'm going to use Danish oil but I kind of pause at 180 and decide what finish I'm going to use because sometimes I need to go back up to 220 depending on the actual finish. Thank you. 
Sometimes the bases of these dressers just need a little refresh. So I like to use just a 120, 150, or 180, depending on what it needs. And I like to go in and just kind of give it a nice, fresh sand. There's just something about sanding wood. You just get that layer of grit and grime off and just makes everything nice and new again. So sometimes just a good sand, even on a part of a dresser that's not necessarily going to be seen, it just kind of re refreshes it. I'm going to use plastic wood to make some of the repairs in the veneer and I decided to try to tint it. So I have some dye stain that I picked up um, from General Finishes and I'm just going to add a little bit to the plastic wood and see if I can tint it because this is the area on the base that I'm going to try to um, put stain on. So I thought if I could get a little darker it might kind of help it blend in a bit. So it's a bit of an experiment. Um, I think you probably should have an actual tint but it's dye so I thought well we'll try it. I'm not really sure if it was a success. I mean, it did darken it, um, but this plastic wood, I'll be honest, I'm not a fan. It's just, it's just kind of, uh, I, I don't know, you see it, I have a real hard time just spreading it. And so, and it was like that whether I tinted it or not. I'm just not a big fan. Minwax has a really nice wood filler that's a lot smoother. This one's just kind of cakey and gosh, it dries so fast, even though it's in that container and I, and I um, hammered it, it still popped open and it started drying out. So I like plastic wood, but they got to work on their containers and storage. Um, you can see it just doesn't it just doesn't smooth out very well. So I, I think I like the Minwax better, but I'm gonna use this up. So since I decided to keep the hardware, I tested it to see if it was brass. If it's magnetic, then it's not real brass. You can see as I'm cleaning it, that brass plating is just coming right off. So um, this is something I'm just going to have to clean and respray. So I'm going to respray it with my favorite uh, gold spray paint. This is by Rust-Oleum. I'll have it linked in the description. It has actual like gold leaf in it. So I love it. It's my favorite. Um, so now I'm ready to start the top. Because I had so much damage, I am going to go ahead and paint out the body. So I'm just giving it a really nice scuff sand, make sure that it's smooth. I'll fill in any areas that need to be filled in so that I can get a really nice smooth finish and good adhesion. Sometimes when you're sanding, there's like little pieces of loose veneer that came up. And this is what happened with this little piece. Um, this wasn't when I was sanding, it just caught on the sandpaper and it popped up. So I'm just going to glue it back down um, because this is the area I really would like to try to stain. So there was a few areas like this where my filler wasn't completely flat. So you really want to make sure that all of your areas are completely flat before you go to prime and paint, because if not, that will show through, um, through your paint job. So sometimes people think, oh, you can just paint over that. So that's one of the areas I've really had to work on, honestly, especially like when I'm using Bondo, you've got to kind of feather out the edges. You have to make sure it's completely smooth. Otherwise, you'll be able to see it through your paint finish. So now that all my sanding is done, I'm just going to give it one glass clean with a 50-50 mixture of denatured alcohol and water and make sure I have get rid of all any kind of hidden grease or grime that might um, interfere with the adhesion. I'm using Zinger's 123 primer. This is their water-based primer. Um, for the tops, this, the way I like to do is I kind of like to do the perimeter first. So you'll see I'll do the edges because if I try to do the edges later, 
then a lot of times it leaves little creases on the top. So I like to do the um, edges around and then I come back and I'll do the top. I'll do the perimeter, I'll fill everything in and then I'll slow down and do nice long strokes and make sure that it's all even. And then I'll stop, walk away and let it dry. I love this tiny little paintbrush. I picked it up to do a Oh, I was trying to do some type of a faux technique, and I, I use it a lot. Um, usually I, I like angled ones, but this is flat, and it's by Stahlmeister, and it's a fun little brush. I, I, need it, I need sometimes a little brush to get into certain areas, and this is a fun little brush to kind of have in my toolkit. After that dries, I'm going to give it a nice scuff sand between coats, and I'm going to do a second coat. Here is the roller that I'm using. This is from Sherwin-Williams. It is a microfiber roller. I um, believe it's a 3 8 inch. And I like to kind of give it a nice little mist with some water. This is tricorn black that I'm using. And again, I'm doing the same procedure. I'm doing the edge of it. And then I'm coming around and doing the perimeter. And then I will offload everything and just do a nice, smooth, long strokes to even everything out. First coats kind of look scary, you know, don't worry about it. It's, this one ended up needing three coats. So um, first coats always look really splotchy and terrible, but don't worry about it. Just keep going. Between coats, I always make sure I do a nice scuff sand just in case any lint or anything has gotten stuck in my paint surface. I want to make sure that's really smooth. So I always do a nice little scuff sand between my coats. I'm using Sherwin-Williams, their emerald line. This is their urethane trim enamel. And again, the color is tricorn black. I'm using the zebra brush. I believe this is their two inch um, angle brush. And they, they make a really great paintbrush as well. They're very application specific. As you can see, the second coat makes everything just a little bit better. <laughs> so like I said, the first coat is usually kind of scary, but it, it the second coat, and then again, I ended up doing three light coats on this. I don't do real heavy coats. It's always better to do thin coats, let that finish build up. And if I had done a tinted primer, I mentioned it in another video, but really, if you're doing a dark color, you really should do a tinted primer if possible. You can get um, primers. I usually use Ben primer, um, Ben shellac primer, but you can usually get the primers tinted at your local Lowe's or your local Home Depot, and so they will tint them. They won't go too dark. They'll go with like a gray. So now I'm ready to move on to my drawers. I'm just going to test my carbide scraper. Honestly, the finish was so thin that um, it hardly took any effort to get it off. So I could have used stripper, but it was super easy just to get off with my carbide scraper. And then I went in with my sandpaper and just sanded it smooth. I'll sand through the grits. I'll start with 80, then I'll go up to 120, 180, end with 220 because I am going to go ahead and use a gel stain. And so this particular one I'm using recommends that I go up to 220. Here's the Minmax colored wood filler that I mentioned earlier, and I, you see how much smoother it goes on? I really like it a lot better than the plastic wood. I'm trying a new technique today that I read about, and it's putting a slip coat down of mineral spirits before you put on your oil-based um, stain. I usually use shellac or a sanding sealer or something underneath my stains just to help it to be less splotchy, but I've been having some problems with it lately, so I thought I was going to try this technique. So right after you put on the mineral spirits, then you're going to apply your gel stain. Gel stain is not a penetrating stain. It just it sits on top. That's why the mineral spirits is supposed to kind of help it go on a little bit more smoothly, that slip coat underneath. And so you're going to rub it against the grain, and then you'll go with the grain, and then you'll take a separate rag, and you'll just wipe off any excess.
You remember the area that I had to do a little veneer repair? Well, this is the wonderful thing about gel stain. You can just kind of work it into those areas. And because it sits on top, you can kind of put it on and then just feather it out with a little bit of chip brush. And it just totally covers those repair areas beautifully. So here I'm doing the slip coat again, and I'm applying the gel stain. This is Verithane Gel Stain in Hickory. And I have to say, I really like this technique. It worked beautifully. I had mentioned I've had some problems with the shellac and the different things, sanding sealers that I've used um, the last couple weeks. And so that's why I was researching and found this new method. And so this might be a this might be a really nice possibility for me. I do like um, Seal Coat, which is a de-wax shellac by Zinger, but it's just really hard to find for me. So this Mineral Spirits worked really good. So after the gel stain dried, I'm going to seal it up with some Osmos PolyX oil. It's a hard wax oil. It gives a really beautiful, low luster um, shine to it. You just simply wipe it on and wipe it off. It's super easy and I love it. It's very durable too. I reattached the hardware that I sprayed earlier and now I'm ready to really work on the drawers. So I'm gonna give them a really good clean with another with a degreaser. And then I'm going to, sometimes these older ones need to just have a little bit of extra um, wax on those drawer guides so that they can slide a little more easily. I like to line my drawers. I just think it's a nice little extra touch. And a lot of people, it's too much because of math and measuring, but I don't, ma I don't do any measuring now, I don't need math. I just pull it across my drawer and then I kind of crease it, make a cut. So I'm just giving it maybe, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch extra on each side. Um, and then I'm gonna roll it back up. I'm gonna put it against the front of the drawer and then I'm just gonna cut it, you see, along the end. So again, I'm not giving too much extra. That's the key to this. You don't want too much paper or it's just difficult to work with. I'm going to pull down about the top third and I'm going to place it against the top of the drawer and then I'm just going to start kind of creasing it down with my hand and once I have that section all smoothed out then I'll pull the rest of the backing off. I'll continue smoothing it out very gently with my hands. You can see I'm just gonna go really very gently with my fingers. I'm just gonna press it into the corners. I wanna go real smooth because I don't wanna tear anything. So the first pass is just my hands. Then I'm gonna come in with a plastic scraper. This is a Bondo scraper because it's a flexible plastic. It's really gentle on it. So my first pass is my hands. Then I'm going to use the Bondo scraper and just try to kind of get all the bubbles out. Then I'm going to come in with a plastic wallpaper scraper and I'm going to do the same thing, 
but because everything's kind of smoothed out, it's not going to tear anything. So I like to get into those corners, make sure all of those seams are really pressed in tightly. And then I'm going to come back with my X-Acto knife and I'm going to make my trim. I'll pull my excess off. Now, if it doesn't come off in a one big long string, don't yank on it because it will tear. And then just use your X-Acto knife and make an extra little trim and then pull it right off. So let's look back at the before. It had some potential, had a nice, some little details with the arched base. Obviously it needed a lot of extra work because it had some damage along the top. We had some missing veneer along one of the drawers, but you can see it did have some potential. I really did like that hardware. I thought it was really pretty. Even though it was brass plated and not real brass, I was able to just spray it out. But it definitely had some potential. So after just a little bit of paint, a little bit of work, here's the final product. What do you think? I think it turned out great. It's cute little, I think it's a really cute little dresser. I love the base. I'm glad I was able to keep it wood. And can you believe the wood grain on the drawers? I think it turned out great. I'm really glad I kept the hardware. It was original to the piece. I think it fits, I think it really fits the piece. Can you believe that paint? Now that is not a sprayed finish. That is just a rolled finish. So you can get a really nice finish with the right roller. So I'll have them linked in the description. But gosh, I think it turned out really cute. What do you think? Do you like it? Do you like the black and the wood combo? It's one of my favorite combos. You'll see it a lot. But man, tricorn black, it works. Can you, isn't that a beautiful, nice little shine that the Poly-X oil gives? Tell me what you think.